Hey guys, Vladimir here. Since it's December and Christmas is just right around the corner, I thought we'd design something a little festive today. We're gonna design a Drew Loops Christmas tree. But before I forget, I wanna let you know that I've just created and released a free Fusion 360 crash course, which you can find on my website at desktopmakes.com. So check it out. Like I said, it's free to enroll. Okay, now about Drew Loops. As far as I can tell, the term was coined by Thingiverse user Mark Peters, who goes by the username Petersum. The technique involves printing in a way that allows the filament to freely fall, resulting in a more organic and random pattern. I've experimented with this technique in the past when I created this flower that I uploaded to Thingiverse and it's a lot of fun to experiment with. This design was actually inspired by Thingiverse user BQ Labs who uploaded this tree. After seeing their tree, I decided to design a similar one in Fusion 360. Let's jump into Fusion and after the design, I'll talk a little about the slicer settings I use and how to get different results by controlling your filament fan. Before we begin, I want to point out that I have my default modeling orientation set to Z up and you can simply change that by going to your preferences and changing the default model orientation from Y up to Z up. I click apply and then OK. All right, let's begin by creating a sketch on our XY plane and I don't need to see that origin, so I'm going to untangle that. We're going to begin with a circle, so C for a circle and we'll make this three millimeters in diameter and hit enter. I zoom in a bit. Next, I'm going to create a rectangle. So R for a rectangle. I'm going to start drawing it and I'm going to enter a dimension of 30 tab and then one millimeter. So it's 30 by one. Hit enter and I'm going to grab my midpoint constraint here and then constraint this bottom edge of that rectangle to my center point here and that'll place it right there, right with the midpoint. Hit T for trim and I'm going to trim these three edges and that leaves me with the circle and my rectangle. Okay, let's create a uh, rectangular pattern of, or a circular pattern of that rectangle. So we're gonna go to sketch, go down to circular pattern. You will get this dialog box uh, as my objects. I'm gonna double click on the rectangle and then for my center point, I'm just gonna select my circle and quantity. I'm gonna make 12 of them and then click okay. Now, if I zoom in, you'll see that these overlap. That's okay. And I want to be able to select everything with one click. So what I'm going to do is select just my circle, hit X to make it a construction line. And now if I click, everything is selected. I can click stop sketch, hit E for extrude, and I'm going to bring this up 0 0.3 millimeters because I'm going to be printing with a 0.3 millimeter layer height. Um, so I'm going to set this just to be one layer thick. So let's try that again, 0 0.3, click OK. And now if we can view this from the top, we can see our shape. So that's one layer, we can see how it looks from the side. And next we'll make a few copies of this. So we're gonna go right click, go down to move copy, and you have to do this in the right order or you'll have to repeat the steps. So first make sure you have the move object selected bodies, and we're gonna set that widget right to that center. And then you have to click on create copy. Now this is the part you can't forget to do this. Uh, you have to do this next and then you're gonna take this little widget here, the arrow, we'll move that up and we'll notice that our Z distance is moving. So we wanna move that in the Z direction. Uh, so we're gonna enter three millimeters here and then we're gonna view it from the top and we're gonna take this little widget and we're gonna turn it 10 degrees or you see here, negative 10 degrees, you can either type that in or just spin it, and then we'll click OK. All right, so now we have two layers, and it's offset by 10 degrees. We're gonna do that one more time, so we'll right click, go repeat, move, slash, copy, set our widget in place, look at our dialog box, we're gonna highlight that Z distance, and click three, whoops, see, I already, did what I told you not to do. So once, this is my point, once you start typing your move copy or create copy is, uh, gets grayed out and you can't select it. So let's, uh, we're gonna actually have to, can't, well, let's see, if I X this out, let's go to bodies, put our widget. Okay, now we get our create copy back. So we're gonna click on that next 
and then we'll answer our distance of three millimeters and we'll see that that moved up three millimeters and next I'm gonna go to a top view and rotate this another negative 10 degrees and then click OK all right so I've got three copies uh, and the top ones are each rotated 10 degrees so next we're gonna take these three copies and we're gonna do a rectangular pattern so we'll go to create down to pattern rectangular pattern and I'm gonna do a selection from left whoops I don't want this type of selection I want the window selection so I'm gonna select that um, change pattern type to bodies and I'm gonna draw a box from right to left select everything it should be three selected under objects direction I'm gonna zoom in and select that blue line here as my z-axis and I can start dragging this up and I'm gonna change extents or the distance type from extents to spacing now I know these are three millimeters apart so I know that's three six and I want my other one to start at nine so I'm gonna enter distance from four to nine so that let's go to front view and that'll evenly space it so right now it's showing a quantity of three um, I'm gonna make eight of these so I'll enter eight under quantity and click OK so the quantity will depend on how high you want your Christmas tree to be um, so I want this to be around 70 or so millimeters so let's inspect that and see what that height is I'm gonna measure from the bottom here to the top and that's gonna be a distance of 69.3 that's perfect so next let's take a look at what we created so we have this sort of kind of looks like a very spirally effect because of the way we rotated them and if you look from the top we can see that they're all lined up okay let's create a sketch now on this bottom plane and make sure to select the plane and not the body here so if I hover over the plane it'll highlight uh, the reason is if we select the bottom edge here or that bottom face it's gonna project all these uh, sketches into that plane which I don't want so let's select just that that plane C for circle and I'm gonna draw a circle here make it eight millimeters in diameter hit enter and we're gonna take that circle select it E for extrude let's go to this view I'll start dragging it up and I'm gonna set the distance to be a little higher than my tree so or a little higher than the branches so I'll make that 75 uh, millimeters and I'm gonna set or change operation from cut to join the nice thing about doing it this way is it, it's gonna pretty much join everything so it's gonna apply a boolean operation so you'll notice that I've got all these bodies here uh, for each one of these uh, layers that I created or those copies but once I click OK and I have my operation to join it's gonna combine everything into one body alright so now you can see just one body there and this is all one okay what I really wanted was this to be a tapered uh, extrusion here the cylinder to be tapered to be more like a cone like a you know to resemble a tree so let's go back to that uh, feature we just created that extrude I'm gonna double click on that and what I should have done was when I extruded it you'll notice you'll get this little uh, widget here that we can we can rotate so let's go to a front view here so we can either slide this uh, in or out to make it you know, smaller or bigger, but if you go too small, it actually disappears. So sometimes um, you're better off just writing it in. That's, that's a huge cone. So for the degrees, I'm gonna do, let's see what one degrees looks like. Actually that goes out, so we'll go negative one. That tapers in a bit let's try negative two okay it tapers in even more but the problem is I want the cone to be uh, bigger than where the edges meet here for the individual branches so let's try negative 1.5 and that looks good so we'll click OK we'll zoom out okay so now we need to actually make this look like a tree and give it a little uh, sort of a triangle shape so to do that we'll create a sketch 
on the XY plane here, so that front plane, you want to make sure again you select the plane. Sometimes you're better off just getting rid of the bodies for now, so you're sure you have the right plane and we'll bring bodies back on. And I'm going to hit L for line, and I'm going to draw a line in, uh, on the bottom here. You don't want to be um, right on this edge here, so you just want to go down a bit. So I'm going to just reference that center point, and I get that dashed blue line, and I'm going to click, uh, click somewhere here. And then I'm going to go up, let's go to uh, about right here and go into the middle, I'm making sure you get these constraints showing your line is either parallel or perpendicular. And then I'm going I'm to go down for my last line and connect that to my first line and that'll give me a close profile. Okay, now I can go in and edit this. I'll hit escape and maybe bring this up a bit, bring this in and bring, I can bring this out a little bit, and bring it down. Once you're happy with that shape, you can just go to create, revolve, we'll select our profile, our axis is gonna be that center line. And we're gonna change the operation from cut to intersect. And then click okay. And after a little thinking, Fusion will give us our shape here. So we should just be left with uh, everything within that Revolve profile. All right, so it's looking more like a tree. Uh, let's give it an actual trunk. So we'll display that sketch that we made. So we're going to click here, go to our sketch three, no, our sketch two. We'll select it, E4 extrude. Let's go to a front view and I'm going to bring this down. Uh, let's do negative five millimeters. But because I wanted to have that same taper angle as the uh, rest of this, I'm going to actually click on taper angle and we did a 1.5. So I'm just going to enter that in. And it's barely noticeable because it's only five millimeters in distance, but uh, it's enough that I can tell. So we'll click OK. And you'll notice then if we select this perimeter of that circle, uh, it'll actually say that the radius is 4.131 instead of 4. So we know that that is a little bit bigger. Okay, next, in order for this to be able to stand up right, we're going to create another sketch on that bottom face. See for a circle, and we're going to make a, a little base of 20 millimeters. Hit enter, E for extrude. Let's just select both of these, and we'll extrude it up. Let's do three layers. So since we're printing with a 0.3 millimeter resolution, we're going to go with a 0 0.9 distance. Uh, let's do a negative. We'll go up. And we'll set that cut operation to a join. Click OK. And then we'll do a little fillet on the bottom here. So we'll do a 3 millimeter fillet to give it some strength. Click OK. We'll zoom out and the final thing we'll do is let's just put a chamfer on the top of this tree here. So we'll go to modify chamfer, select that surface, try a one millimeter chamfer. That looks good. We'll click OK. And there's our tree. I printed this with 0 0.3 millimeter height. And if you're using a slicer that has a simulation preview like Simplify 3D, you'll want to confirm that your branches look like this. One path going out and coming back in. If you're getting infill here, then you'll want to change the width of your branches in Fusion. The other important setting to play with is fan settings. With the fan on full power, you'll get one side of the branches blowing over like this. And with the fan completely off, you'll get this very droopy effect. Both have their applications, but just make sure it's intentional. One feature I liked about printing this on the Prusa i3 Mark II is that you have control of live fan speed settings so that you can experiment in real time. As you can see, experimentation was a big part of this process, as it is with 3D printing in general. I now have an entire forest. I may need to design a town to go with my forest. A Christmas town, perhaps? Well, I hope you guys enjoyed that. If you did, hit the like button and subscribe for more future content. 
as always if you have any questions leave it on the comments below and don't forget to check out especially you beginners uh, don't forget to check out my design course it's absolutely free on my website desktopmakes.com i know you'll enjoy it and i'll leave the link below in the description as well all right guys take care